Welcome everyone to a uh, Ken Hill video session. And this video session uh, has, uh, has been spurred on um, a graph that I put up uh, on social media. Uh, it's on my website as well. And it had to do with, with data and we were comparing a 400 versus a 600 uh, versus a thousand. And it's it was, it was pretty cool to see it, but of course there's so much information available in that data. So what this video is about is showing people how we look at data and how we use data um, when training riders. So there's, there's a ton to unpack here. And I'll do a separate video on that 400 versus 600 versus 1000, but I wanted to get something out ahead of time that shows how we look at our data and um, uh, taking people through sort of the process of, of data because everybody thinks, you know, data is, there is a lot to data and it's how you read the data, of course, but a lot of people think, oh gosh, I have to have all this data, you know, it's throttle and break and all those things. And, and we'll kind of dive into that as well. So when we look at data, first thing that we're going to start off with is we, we can simply use GPS speed and GPS speed tells us so many things about what's going on with the rider. But of course, when we use GPS speed, it's just like anything else. We, we also have to have a good reference to be able to compare it to. And I, I want to I start off with, uh, I want to start off with that. So the way that we're going to start off with that is you'll, of course, you'll see here in, uh, in just a second is having, having the proper reference is, uh, is such a big deal because as uh, as we as we know, um, this typically this typically is the uh, is the situation where um, yeah we have this uh, this great reference here, and then we actually have what the actual outcome is. But if we if we don't have that proper reference, we really we don't have anything to compare it to. So in this case, it's uh, it's pretty evident um, of what uh, of what we have here. So let's dive into it and. Um, I apologize for, uh, it's, it sometimes takes me a little bit to figure out what the exact um, screen that I wanna share, but um, you'll, you'll, you'll get through it and uh, you'll, you'll figure it out. So, all right, let's start off with how we look at data and, and what, does that really, what does that really look like? So I'm gonna start with this graph right here. And the way that this, the way that this graph works is this is just simple um, GPS speed. And with simple GPS speed, this is at um, Chakwala. Uh, this is um, uh, data graphs between two different bikes. I'm the rider on both bikes, but uh, we've got our GPS speed, which is great. And down here below, um, this graph is just a cumulative time difference between uh, the lap. So if the lap is faster or slower, it, it'll show it where it's faster, then it'll show it where it's, it's slower. Not too worried about that. Instead, we're gonna concentrate on the actual speed graph itself. And what we look for in these, in these speed graphs is we, we simply look for where the slowest part of the corner is. That's where we start. So even if I'm looking at data at a very high level, and, and we'll, talk, we'll talk about that as well, even if we're looking at data at a very high level, we're going to start when it comes to comparisons. We're going to start uh, with the slowest po uh, point of the corner, and this is this is taking into consideration the rider aspect. Yes, there's a million things that we can do with data on the bike and the bike setup. That's a whole nother thing for for this. This is about rider training and about what the rider's doing and how we can improve the rider. And here, what we start again, again, what we start with is our slow points of the corner. And what we're trying to do is we want to make sure that our, our slow points, points of the corner are lined up. And you can see, even though this is two, two very, very different motorcycles, um, you can see my slow points of the corner match up pretty darn well. And in this case, um, we had a stock uh, 2020 ZX6 and um, a basically stock GSX-R1000. Um, the GSX-R had some suspension work. The, ZX, the ZX-6 was uh, completely stock. And so when you get to see where, where some of the um, differences 
are in the bike. In this case, um, you know, if you get if you take this example here, where um, the the ZX6 is uh, blue, the GSXR is red. Um, we can see that we're a little bit slower right here, and we can figure out why. It's just we still had some stock settings in the bike. But what we need to start with is is matching up these slow points of the corners, and that that really is what tells the picture um, to start with. And so as we match up those slow points, then we can look at how we're getting to them, how we're getting from them, which we'll talk about next. So first thing off with, we start with is slow points of the corners. And of course, then we can get into some of the other aspects as well, you know, where maximum speed is, where the brakes are being applied as, in, um, as well. So let's go into then another graph. So let's get rid of this graph. And let's look at um, this particular graph. I want to use this one first. And this is a graph where a client um, that we had was riding with us and said, um, there's no way that I can go any faster. I'm going as fast as I can. And there's no way that you're actually kind of like going slower at the slow points than I may be. Um, um, you know, I feel like I, I'm, I'm completely on the edge. So this particular graph has got a couple things going on with it. First of all, the, the GPS speed is um, in this graph here. Let me clear that out. Um, GPS speed is in this section. And with the AIM, AIM software, you can actually, they've got an alg algorithm built in here for essentially decel and acceleration. Um, as G-force. And so that one, this graph just, just has that one. And you can, there, you'll see some things that really, really mimic. So when we first look at this graph, you can really see how the slow points don't match up. So, you know, why do we look at bike placement as being the number one thing in, in the fundamentals, right? Why is bike placement um, the number one order of the sport? Because we can do all things, sorts of things, but if we don't line up where the bike has to be, it's it makes it so we add consequences, we try to go quicker. So in this case here, you can see how far off the bike placement is with the reference lap. And it's it's pretty far off where, where the rider here is actually getting direction much later. And of course, if they're getting direction much later, they don't want to accelerate. So that's why the acceleration suffers. So a great example of the reference lap gets the bike slowed and pointed earlier so it can accelerate for a longer period of time and do it safer as well. And you can actually see how this, we can start to dive into this. You can see how this graph looks where in this case, the rider starts to accelerate and realizes, well, maybe I'm getting to the edge of the track and actually backs off the acceleration and then goes to it again. Uh, and you can see that in multiple places where the rider doesn't have direction, starts to accelerate and has to wait for direction to come. So we could, we could literally chop 10 seconds off this rider's lap time. It doesn't mean they don't have the skills. They don't have the bike in the right, the right place. So this is why when we, we can look at these graphs and understand where the bike placement is. And we can take that a few steps further where, um, for instance, we know that um, they've overslowed, they've turned in too early, haven't used their brakes. When we see their speed graph, stay um, um, stay flat. So in this case, you can, you can really see it down here in the forces where they're just holding neutral throttle for a really, really long time because they don't have direction. So they've, they've gone to the corner, um, gone to the brakes, got off the brakes early, and they just have to hold their speed. And here, they're not seeing the exit early because we're not, they're not, if we see that the acceleration's late, then we know that we're not recognizing what the, the exit is. So there's a ton that can be learned from these, these speed graphs and understanding them. So this is a, a pretty extreme example, but you can see that if we just, this rider's not afraid of the brakes, they're not afraid of the throttle, they just don't have the bike in the right place. And the idea is that we simply wanna be able to match up where these slow points are. And of course, we, there's, there's a ton that goes on there, right? Is it um, that, um, they're not understanding what exit direction is. Um, they don't have a good exit reference. They don't have a good turn in reference. They're not using their brakes properly. They don't have, not using their eyes. 
There's all those things that go along with the fundamentals that lead to this. But this is how we, we start the process when we, when we look at uh, data. So let's take this a little bit further. So now we've got a rider that's, that's going pretty quick. And they also feel that they're on the edge as well. Like they just feel like they just really can't go any quicker. And this particular graph is literally the, the same identical lap time um, at, at um, this is at uh, Miller uh, or UMC West. And we've got a writer that says, I am on the edge. There's no way, there's no way that I can go faster. So by using the appropriate um, uh, reference lap, you can see why. So there, the, the reference lap is in blue. Um, the rider that we're evaluating is in red. And you can see how they're getting direction later. So they actually carried a little bit more mid-corner speed. They got direction late and were able to use the acceleration. Went to the brakes later, later, went to the, went to the brakes later, later on direction and can't. And you can just see it just starts to snowball. And much, much later, very, very rushed. In a rush, they got just basically trying to keep the bike on the track, accelerate really hard. This rider's got incredible skill, but because their slow point, right, where their bike placement was, wasn't precise, they're feeling like there's no way they, they can go quicker. And, and you know what? They can't. They can't go quicker because they're, they're putting themselves in the position of a lot of consequence. And you can just, you can see how this just keeps snowballing in pretty much each one of these here, a little bit too much mid corner speed. And then they go to accelerate and then have to wait for direction and then go back to it again. And same thing there. This one, they nailed it. You can see how nice this is. Absolute same acceleration, same deceleration as well. So that's fantastic. So this is how we start looking at some of these speed graphs and we start to line up the slow points. And again, it starts to tell us exactly what's going on with the rider, whether the bike's in the right place, um, whether they've turned in too early, whether they're not using the brakes appropriately or whatever it may be. So tons of information that can be um, gathered from, from just looking at this. So does that mean that we don't use other graphs, which, which is with the throttle and brake? No, 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 we, we absolutely use those but we use those when it's time to introduce them. So, um, but again, we're gonna, we're gonna work on lining up, we're gonna work on lining up um, the speed traces uh, first. So to continue, let's, let's talk about that a little bit more because having uh, affordable, uh, having affordable um, equipment that allows us to get this information is out there, whether it's an AIM solo, um, there's even some of the, the other um, app-based stuff that works pretty well, but you can capture this information and be able to show it. We use, you know, we use um, uh, in my MotoPilot program, we use the AIM just because it's sort of industry standard and we have basically data on almost every track in the US with it. And uh, it makes our job uh, very, very easy. It's easy to just take the solo, put it on somebody's bike, literally tape it on there and send them off and get some laps. Um, we've got our reference laps available for it. So um, that's why we're using the AIM systems. Um, just makes it really, really easy for us. The, the next level of this is once we start to get into this and we get a rider that has really consistent bike placement and understands bike placement, then yes, for sure, we start to, we start to work into the other stuff. And the other stuff simply means things like, things like um, the throttle and brake graphs. So in this case, um, and of course, there's there's much bigger investment uh, that goes along with that. But then when we start to match up, you know, some of the slow points, like right? the slow points here, um, you know, for the most part match up. Uh, we're comparing sort of two different bikes here with different tires, different grip, but we still look at the slow points. Then we can start to look at the throttle graphs, and then we can start to look at the brake graphs as well, and start to understand what that rider's doing, and we start to break those down but we have to have the bike placement first, right? We don't want to put our throttle graph first. We don't want to put our brake graph first because if we don't know if the bike is in the right spot, right? None of that, none of that is, um, is really valid. So, all right, to wrap up, I just wanted to do a quick video on how we look at GPS speed um, as our base source, our base source of information when it comes to data 
And then we can bring the other points of data uh, into play after that. So, all right, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching this one and uh, there'll be more.